Welcome to the final episode of the architecture tutorial. Uh, we have covered a lot in the past few episodes and this is the final episode where we can uh, understand how a uh, complex design, a full project with all of its surrounding can be turned into a spectacular visual literally in seconds and how you can uh, fill them up with life, how to fill up the surrounding of the building with people, with cars, animated human characters, uh, animated surfaces, water, trees and also the surrounding that uh, makes a fully believable lifelike uh, render and also an animation in the end which will take only a few minutes to generate even if it's a longer shot. So we have actually talked about, uh, we will also cover uh, what are the most important key points that you need to consider uh, checking at least before you start the uh, conversion into a live project. Uh, we will understand also how the live project is connected, linked to the original uh, source project. So whenever a change happens, you will be able to live sync the changes uh, between the original source project and the uh, live uh, visual that you are actually already uh, working on. And we will also talk about uh, how in the end you can, uh, by filling up all this, uh, all with these details, you can turn them into updated uh, visuals in seconds and uh, generate a video file in the end, which you can then send over to your clients. If you have any questions during this show, please do not uh, hesitate to ask. Here's the chat bar. You can ask, your, ask any of your questions here. We are here there. Uh, to uh, answer your questions. And also, if you are watching this show a little later, once we are already not live, then just leave a comment below. And also, you can send our, your, your questions uh, in an email or any other uh, means. We are more than happy to answer to any of your questions. If you like this content, please uh, like the video itself and also subscribe to our channel uh, so we will understand that you like this sort of content and we will deliver more. Uh, and I think we have pretty uh, much covered what happened in the past. So let's go and uh, figure out how we can turn our models into visuals in life. Now that we have got our model ready, our design with all of its features, with documentation, we have created the PDF files and everything else. We are ready to pass this model into live and uh, dress it up with uh, living, uh, moving, animated objects, uh, vivid textures, uh, materials, and even perhaps video surfaces. To be able to do that, first let's summarize what we need to have in a model to be able to uh, start uh, from an ideal point of this design. Well, these are actually things that you would anyhow normally do during a design process like this. So it's not, uh, not nothing extra, but uh, I think it's worth uh, summarizing at least what we need to, uh, need to focus on. The first thing is, I believe, uh, what I should mention is the uh, geolocation and the sun position. Now, this is something that we normally set up during the, the regular design process. We can find this uh, in the properties in file uh, on under BIM and there's the project parameters. We actually did that before earlier uh, in an earlier stage of this design. We have uh, selected the project location using an address in Google Maps and that's how we located this project and placed it uh, on the earth uh, on its surface. Now we can also change the uh, north direction. We can also set up the north direction. Actually this palette here allows you to set up the sun position, Heliodon and so on. So you have many and many options here. And uh, during the design process, we actually use the view and sun shadow and shadow simulation. Just as a friendly reminder, shadow simulation is something that you can turn on and then you can just, you know, quickly click and drag this sun icon wherever you would like to uh, on this sun path which is at the given time and at the given date at the specific geolocation that you have selected with the proper uh, north direction. So this is how you can set it up. Uh, once you do that, the soft, uh, software will calculate the uh, sun position based on that. And this is an information that you will pass over to live and live will use the same information. Besides, of course, the model itself, the surrounding of, of that uh, model that we have created. And uh, here comes the other thing 
the materials, the, the textures uh, and the material settings. Now for the material settings, it's, uh, it's a very good thing that uh, ArchLine itself, together with Live, offers ready-made uh, render styles. Now those are the render styles that we used on different surfaces, like we decided that this will be a wall surface, a uh, wooden surface, a glass surface, metallic surface, and so on. So this is something that determines the, the material, how it by default looks like, which you can obviously, of course, fine tune, customize, and you can even create your own materials in ArchLine, just as you could do the same thing in Live. Now, another thing besides these two is that you need to uh, place all the lamps if you would like to during the design process. And those lamps will also be uh, communicated to the visual that you create in live. And in live, literally in seconds, uh, you can create uh, the visuals that you would like to, full HD or even larger resolutions. And uh, under a few seconds or minutes, you can also create animated sequences that I will show you how you can create that. So we have a very uh, interesting topic uh, coming on. So let's start working with this model in live. So now the first step that you need to do with this, ah, and one another thing I, I nearly forgot to, to mention that, all the views that you have created previously, all the perspectives that we have selected and created in, 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 in ArchLine, those are also passed over to uh, live. Those are actually basically the, 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 the ground truth, the, the, the basics uh, of creating the visuals that we would like to communicate uh, with our clients with. So um, that, now what I have here is the full, fully featured uh, rich architectural model without the trees, without all the uh, surrounding uh, details like cars and everything else. And this is what I would like to do in live uh, very quickly. So what I will do, I will just uh, keep this um, this 3D view, this uh, 3D perspective activated and I go to the ribbon, select view and I go to uh, rendering and select Archline XP Live. Now this is a process that could take a while because uh, of the density of your model. If it's probably a very dense model, it will take a little longer than if you are actually designing a smaller, uh, less dense, less uh, populated uh, model. Uh, so it really depends on this, on the size, on the weight of the of complexity of your model. So now I just hit yes. The software actually creates a package of this model. It will uh, give this package to the separately installed live software, and it will open uh, in live pretty soon, and we will see the result. Okay, so now once we are in live. Uh, our model is uh, here. Uh, I can keep uh, ArchLine, the design software, behind open. And whenever there is any sort of design change, I can use the live sync function, which I will introduce a little later, to communicate those changes, even during I'm already working uh, in live and making changes, filling up the model with details. Now, now I'm focusing on this, uh, this detail now. Uh, I mean, on this uh, live model. So what I will do, I will just uh, open it up uh, I mean, enlarge it and uh, let's quickly go through what we have here. So just as I mentioned, we have all the sun settings set up, uh, all the views actually, what we have here on the, on, the, on the tray, we have the internal view, we have this frontal view, we have the street view, we have the backyard view, all these are the views that I've previously uh, created for this, uh, for this model. And uh, I also have the uh, material setting. So now I mentioned that we have all those materials set up according to the render styles that I previously used. So when I click here uh, and I select this here, which is for the material properties, uh, it tells me that this is a wall surface, this is a glass surface and so on. So, so based on my previous settings, the materials appear according to their render styles. Uh, metals look metallic, glasses look uh, reflective and refractive and so on. Also uh, talking about this scene, I have set up uh, the sun settings, just as I mentioned, but this is something that, just as I previously uh, told, I can change. This is something that I can click here uh, to the edit sunlight uh, tray. This appears at the bottom of this uh, of this dialog, and then here I can change the weather effects. For example, I can change the the fog. For example, I can reset it back if I don't like it foggy, and I can also change the density of the amount of uh, clouds. Let's just make it nice, uh, a little less cloudy, but still with a with a nice azure 
uh, sky. So this is what I can change here. I can also change uh, the sun settings if I prefer a different one, like for example, this one with a different uh, date and so on. Now, this is something that is uh, connected to each and every views that you have created. So if you prefer a view, for example, the backyard view with a different sun setting, because this is kind of shady, it's uh, the most of the interesting part is in shadow. So I would like to brighten it up. I would like to cast rays on this. I would like to turn the sun over to be able to cast rays on this surface. So what I will do, I will just select this view. I go back to the sun settings and I change this to something over the afternoon. And let me just change this as well a little bit. So we have a little less direct shadow, cast shadow here at the right hand side. So this is, this is what I can do with that. As you can see, you can also change the north direction at any time and you can also customize the weather effects and everything else easily. And then whenever you would like to, you can just quickly jump back to the previous view and start working on the rest of the model. Let's focus on the materials first. The materials are the surfaces that we see all over in this model. And just as I mentioned, I can customize the material. So what I did before, I have selected this material surface and I clicked on uh, edit materials. So the existing materials come with a pretty fine set of reflection, roughness and everything else that comes from ArchLine, the design software. But I can customize that if I like this surface a little bit darker, uh, or a little bit brighter, I can just change it and it's easy to see what happens all over my model. Also, besides that, I can customize the surfaces using the built-in high quality materials of life. This is something that I can find the right hand side in the navigator. The navigator is something that you can turn on and off using this little uh, navigator library uh, button here. And this navigator comes with the first two pages. Those are the object library and the materials library. Uh, the rest is uh, lights, um, hierarchy, the, the, the structure of the project and also the layers. You can even man manage the layers. So what I would like to do is I would like to come here and select materials and I would like to play around with the materials a little bit. And before I do that, let me just go back to the backyard view. I did not mention that, but before, once I designed uh, this model, I actually had this water surface uh, defined as water uh, using the perfect uh, matching render style. Now this is actually a floating, a wavy um, uh, animated surface, uh, a water surface that I can keep it as it is. The software understood that it should be a water surface so it applied the perfect material to it. Uh, just as it did with the with the metallic surface and so on. Uh, but I could go here and change it to something else. Let, let me just check what we have for water. If I come here, let me just use a little bit better perspective as I just use this clean water. Uh, I think that's nice, but let's just check how it looks with looks like with deep water or with pool water. I think this is the perfect uh, choice. So I will just keep that, but keep that in mind that you can just, just click and drag any of those materials onto any of the surfaces and the software will change those. Now the same thing applies, for example, to uh, metallic surfaces or glass surfaces. Let's just play around with the, with the glass surfaces, which we have many around. So let's just go and find something that is called glass. And let's just select like acrylic. I like this, uh, but let's just go with the brown tint, uh, dark tint as a subtle difference. So I just use the brown tint and uh, all around. I would like to use the glass surface uh, on each and every surface. But instead of just click, keep click and dragging onto each of the surfaces, let me just undo this step. I will just enable the all instances mode. Now all instances mode uh, is doing this like you just click and drag onto one surface and if it finds any other it will automatically apply it all around your project so it's a very quick and good choice to 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 have so now i have replaced all my uh, previously existing uh, surfaces to a much better higher quality reflective uh, glass surface that looks just simply better Okay, let's just go around and find for example this uh, front of view now in the, this front of view we can see pretty a lot of this uh, 
and even if I elevate this view, I can see a lot of these, these, these grass surfaces. And I would like to change them to something that comes shipped with the software, which are very good quality environment materials that I can find here. It is called the ground grass. Say if I just click and drag over this surface, it is automatically applied everywhere else, just as you can see. Now let me just uh, play around a little bit with the with the concrete. Now, I only would like to change this concrete surface and this concrete surface because the rest I would like to customize somehow else. So I'm just disabling the all all instances mode and I use this concrete panels here and also this concrete material here. And uh, now around here, this one, I would like to change into a stone surface. Now the, we have stone floor in and from here, I would like to use this concrete, concrete tile here and uh, I also would like to use the same concrete tile all over these ramps but for this uh, I already turn on the all instances mode because I don't want to do that one by one I just click here and now the software replaced it everywhere obviously also on the street which I did not want to so I just disable this option and I go back to the environment that's where I found the asphalt and perhaps I will go with the lighter version of that. So I think this is something that I pretty much like. So, so I will keep this on. Now, um, let's just focus on this area because here I would like to uh, use another material uh, for the sake of the, uh, the, the, the beauty of this render. And also I would like to highlight how detailed and how good quality materials this, is, this shop uh, software is uh, shipped with. So I'm just going to the uh, stone flooring where I was before and let me just apply a material like for example uh, let's just apply this first here I just apply this and as you can see if I zoom in we can see all the all the grouts and all the nice details and it's nice and non-repetitive I can at least not really obviously see the repetitions of this pattern so it's a very good quality material let me just undo this and I would like to use another word for example this cobblestone and this even appears as a 3d surface even though it is still 2d i mean this is still a flat surface but the but the illusion is so perfect it really looks like it's a, it's a 3d surface so so the uh so these materials those are very good quality materials uh you can use them off the shelves they ship with the software you can just click and drag and you can use them on any of the surfaces like for example that this um with this metallic surface this is also something that i wanted to change i wanted to use this dark metal surface on on this one and using the old instances mode I just change it uh, everywhere. Like for example, I just click it here and now, now it's changed everywhere. And also the same thing I will do with this metallic surface here. I will just use an, uh, like it's like, it looks like aluminum. So I'm just dragging it here and over this other surface I'm using another one. So this is how I just quickly customize all the views. Let me just quickly have a view. I think I have not forgotten anything. So this is how I have set up my views. And now I also have a perfect view from uh, the backyard with the perfect light conditions with nice materials and the same applies to the front, to the street view. There's another thing that I wanted to highlight and that's the light sources. Now talking about light sources, I already covered the sunlight, which we saw that we can customize view by view. But there is one uh, artificial light source that we have defined in, in Archline and that is the one under this little surface here. This is actually a lamp on the surface of this, uh, this lab here. So what I did here, I just placed it in Archline, added a light source and uh, once it was transferred here, it is already brightened up the scene. So what can I do with something like this? Here at this panel, I can actually edit all my light sources. I can select the existing light sources that I have for the lamps came, coming through uh, from, uh, from Archline. Or I can all turn them on or off. I can change their intensity. I can change their temperature. I can make them a little bit warmer tone, a little bit cooler tone, tone depending on uh, what I actually need for this uh, specific version. And then now comes an interesting thing, and this is the um, the status of this light source, the, how it behaves. By default, all the light sources in Archline, uh, the artificial light sources that come from Archline are set to Halpo light. Now, Halpo lights nicely bright up the scene around them, but they do not cast shadows. 
Uh, and if I turn them into a real light, shadow caster light, they will actually cast shadows all around them. But this is also a little bit costly. This means that if uh, all the light sources would cast, uh, and if, if I would have hundreds of uh, light sources around and they would all cast light uh, shadows uh, everywhere, the, 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 the performance of being able to work with this model would drastically drop. So in, un until a point with it where it's really laggy and, and difficult to work with. So that's why the software sets all the light sources to help the lights and you can decide which are the, uh, like the hero lights, the ones that, that really make the job and they are, in, they are in, in, in the focus and they are very important. So they would be set to uh, shadow casters and all the rest would be Halper lights. Now I'm actually happy with the Halper light here, so I will keep it that way. Uh, but keep that in mind that the software uh, sets the, all the light sources to Halper lights because they are very easy to render and very fast to render, but you can select any of those light sources and set them to real light, but do, do, do not set all of them to uh, shadow casters because that would be very costly and that would drop the frame rate until a point where it would be very difficult to work with the model in real time like what we do now. Now we arrive to a point where I would like to introduce the live sync function, how it works. Uh, in the original Archline design, I have placed a new item which I would like to synchronize into this visual, which I already made a lot of changes. I dressed up with the new materials and so on. So I would like to show you how uh, the live sync works. Now, if I go back to Archline, the design software, you can see that I have downloaded from uh, 3D Warehouse, I have downloaded a, a wall lamp which I placed on this wall. It will be a nice night light, a directional light, which will help guiding the cars into this, uh, onto this ramp. So I have just placed it here. And just as this change, I could have changed all any of the walls, materials, I could, I could uh, erase uh, items, I could create new items. So any of those changes are things, are changes that you can synchronize using the live sync function. Now the live sync function can be invoked from either from the uh, ribbon view rendering and using the sync with our uh, Play Live option, or you can also call it from live while this project is opened uh, in, in, in Archline. So both application uh, must be open to be able to perform a good live sync operation. So I'm going back to live and here I have the same project open. And what I will do, I will just go to uh, this option and I will just use this, uh, this live sync option. So once I click on this one, uh, and I just do uh, the synchronization. The software will make uh, all the changes synchronized and that will automatically appear. So now that as that was a lamp in the, pre in, in, in the design software, it appears automatically with this light source. I can change the light source intensity. I can change, uh, I can turn it on and off. Uh, I can do whatever I want with this, uh, with this view, uh, I mean, with this, uh, with this lamp, uh, just as I uh, was able to do with this one here. Uh, before the synchronization. To show you this a little, a little better, uh, I would like to also introduce you how you can use the views. Now all those views that I mentioned here, those are not only views, those are all the uh, image files that you can open up and send over to your clients. I will show you that later once I update these views. And you can also create new views. So now these views are the views that came from Archline. That was the place where I defined them. But here, if I would like to set the same view, with, for example, with nighttime settings, I can just add the new view. I can rename that. It automatically gets its name view zero, one, two, three. And I can just name it like night view or something like that. And according to its name, I can just go to the sun settings and change the time to somewhere like this. I think this is a little better. So I can, I can clearly see that highlighted area, how it really nicely affects the surrounding area. So this is, this is what I wanted. So now I have uh, actually uh, uh, another alternative version of this previous view. So I have O3 street view and I have the night view of the same perspective with nighttime settings and, and lights. So this is how it goes. Now let's dress up this model with a lot of details, objects, uh, humans, cars, uh, foliage, trees, and everything else. 
so as we are looking at this ramp here, I will start with the with the cards, for example. So I, I'm going to the navigator. There's this objects page, and here I can find the car library. And besides many other libraries, I can just select this and select, for example, this car sedan red. I can just click and drag it onto any surface. It appears automatically. So what I can do with this, I can just select it, uh, replace it, erase it uh, using these functions here, the move, rotate, rescale options. I can just change its position. I can uh, move it uh, on any of those axes here. I can just rotate it. I think this is what I should do now to nicely align this with the, with the street perpendicular to that. And also I can rescale it if I would like to change this size a little bit. Uh, and also, as you can see, there is this number one, number two appearing at the bottom of this uh, tooltip. It means that those are the hotkeys on the keyboard. So number one, if you hit number one, that will go to uh, the movement uh, translator. If you select number two, that's rotation. Number three is the rescale. Now let's just go back to number one. I would like to move it. Uh, and uh, instead of manually tilting it and positioning it onto the uh, little slanted sloped ramp, what I would do uh, that besides I can move it on uh, along these axes and I can move it uh, along any of those planes, I can actually click and drag this little uh, sphere, which is the origin of this, uh, the root origin of this uh, object. I can click and drag, and now it automatically automatically snaps to the surface, which is very cool because I can easily align it either to a horizontal surface, to a slanted surface, or my, maybe a vertical surface. So this is how I can quickly align it perfectly. Now, talking about these decorative items, uh, there are other things like, for example, uh, the living uh, features of a model like the humans and any other uh, objects that we could place here from the object library. The humans are in the human library and I can for example click and place Sophia. She's waiting for perhaps someone, uh, perhaps her husband or someone. So now I can just nicely align uh, that feature over there and it's, she's, she's so detailed, nice and beautiful animated so she already adds a lot of detail a lot of life into into this uh, visual now let's just uh, show uh, let's just talk about another item let, let me just place one another car and one another human and uh, what I will do I will just place a car here uh, let me just go back to the car library I will place for example this hatchback here just place it around onto the street I will also move it a little bit around so I'm using the number one to move it along that axis and this axis, for example, because here I would like to use this pavement, uh, this walkway to place, for example, Manuel. Manuel uh, is a guy in uh, jogging, so he will be determined as a runner. And uh, well, he's in, uh, he's in a kind of sporty uh, set. So what I will do, I will just animate him. Now, whenever you place an animated human uh, anywhere in the, in, the, in the scene, and uh, if it's not a, st uh, not a static object, like for example, uh, there is Fabian, they are not animated. They are, they are like a statue over there, nice and detailed, but they are not moving. But if you select something, uh, an object like with display icon, those, that means those are animated. You can animate them, you can select animations. So what you can do here, you can select the manual, for example, you can click on the object um, properties and you can change its animation, uh, I mean, uh, this object's animation to, I don't know, something like jogging or something like that. But uh, if you do not have a path that you told to run through, then it will just stay there and uh, stay uh, at the same spot running animated like this. So I will just go back and select, um, for example, standing in place. This, this is perfect. And now what I will do, just let me just zoom out a little bit. So I will just uh, select uh, manual and I click on path animation. I would like to add the path animation. I can also define a vertical animation, but this is not that type of object. So I just select um, add new path. And this tells me that I can also, I can actually click and place those so-called nodes. Those are the, uh, the, the, the corner points, the, the key frames, the key positions where manual should pass through. So uh, this is a very 
uh, simple path, a little way we, but basically it's a straight line. So he will actually run through this and I can either right click or enter, this is what I do, to uh, let him uh, use this path. Now, basically he's aligned to this path and all I need to do is to select the proper animation. All I need to do is to select, for example, uh, jogging. And now he starts jogging with the, prop, with the perfect speed. I don't even have to set the speed. I can change the speed if I want to, but I don't have to. So this is uh, how easily you can set up an animation. You can just define a path. This could be actually a loop as well. If you design this around in a circle like that, he can just continuously and all the time around running around and around in circles. Now, how an animation works like, and this is this the same applies to cars and anything else. If you design a path, you can decide it to be a closed path, an open path. And once it is finished with the animation, it restarts from the uh, beginning and it starts over and over and over again. So it makes a perfect uh, uh, a set for your uh, animations and, and all your um, all your videos that you would like to create to have a nice snapshot. You can even pause the animation, you can stop the animation, you can start the animation, and even you can erase the animation if you don't like that. So now we have this uh, this nice animated feature of our, uh, our, our render. So now what I would like to do is, um, is I would like to add a few more details, like for example, um, trees, uh, other objects uh, and for example decorative items. So now what I will do, I will go to the libraries and here are the decoration items and here I can find a modern fireplace, this one. So I just uh, zoom onto that fireplace and I will just uh, change its uh, position a little bit to be able to uh, work with that uh, and this is what I will change soon. So here's the fireplace I have placed earlier and I'm going to go to the objects library and find a few chairs. Uh, perhaps I also select this and let me just nicely rotate it around a little bit and change its uh, position uh, around, like let me just place it someplace over here. So I will place a few chairs, perhaps uh, uh, this chair 11 here. I would like to also Rotate this a little, so I just select uh, number two, which is for rotation. And I can also use Control copy and Control paste Control c and Control v So what I do, I have selected this item and Control copy and I just Control paste it over to a surface automatically snapped and aligned to wherever I move it. So I just place it here and now I select it and I have this uh, option to rotate this uh, item. So I have these two, two chairs and to finish, finish this area, uh, I will just go and use something specific that is called effects. Now, effects are kind of objects. They are actually nice fire, candlelight, smoke and, uh, and steam effects as you can apply on in, in, in your scene. As you can see, there are various size of fires, large, medium, small, extra small. So depending on your choice, if you can just click and drag it over to a surface, it will start burning those logs over there. Uh, the smaller uh, fire feature is a little, little bit different from the larger ones. That are, that are, those are uh, a little bit kind of slower and so, so they are all having their own uh, features uh, that you might see uh, when you would like to uh, apply any of those onto surfaces. I think this is a little small so I will just use the uh, fire small, not the extra small, it's a little larger, a little slower, a little um, having a different effect. It is also brightening up this uh, part of the scene at, uh, if I use the night view. So this is a very nice uh, detail for this, uh, for this feature here. Now, I think I have finished with this and I have created, I have added a few of those objects that I wanted. And now I would like to add a few other items like, like trees. Uh, foliage items. Now to be able to do that I go to the libraries, to the object library and I select uh, the library called, uh, I mean the folder called trees. Now here I can find trees uh, also arranged by size, large, medium, small, extra small and so on and there is also a little human figure next to them so I can determine roughly how large they would be. And if I would like to place a small acacia, for example, 
um, to this area. I would like to use this area for something else, so I will come back here later. So if I would like to place it here, I can just click and drag and place it over there and click and drag and place it over there as well and click and drag another one and place it over there. Now, as you can see, if you would have to work this way and if you have a lot of trees, this would take a little while. So for that reason, we have two solutions, uh, very quick and convenient solutions that you can do. First things first, if you would like to uh, place individual trees to specific spots, but quickly, then you can turn on the continuous placement and the, you can just select the tree that you like and then you can just look around. Let me just zoom out a little bit and select an area. Like click here, it automatically appears. So you don't have to click and drag over and over and over again. You just select the surface, click there, click there, click there, and those trees automatically appear. Then you select another one, select another larger tree, uh, place it over here, place another one perhaps over there. So this is how easily you can place any of those. Let me just place a medium sized Sakura over there and perhaps a smaller one someplace over there. I think that would look really nice if I would have one like this extra small one over there, for example. So this is how easily you can populate uh, trees around your model. But still, this is a slow uh, method if you have a lot of those items. So if you have a smaller grove or a forest or something like that, you should um, use the uh, item, I mean the tool that we that we called the foliage painter. The foliage painter is a, is a very easy thing to, to use. You just, let me just zoom out. You just, uh, you know, select an area. You have this grass field here selected. This is where you can select any of those. Now, let me just start with the grass field. And if you just zoom in and start painting, holding your mouse, then you can just paint an area with living uh, featured um, grass, for example. Now, this is field grass, so this is kind of wild. This is what I will use in this area, but later I will show you how you can also use mown grass, uh, for example, in this area. So let me just undo this step a little, uh, a little bit so, uh, so I can populate this area a little faster if I change the brush radius, something larger like this, and then I start painting this area like uh, from here, just go over here. I don't have to be very accurate. As you can see, sometimes I'm painting a little bit over this pavement. That's fine. I can change that later. I will use the uh, so-called eraser tool. So I just paint over there, over here. Take care. Don't paint over the side of the car or the side of the tree because that will have an unwanted effect and you don't want to have grass on the side of the tree. So this is how you can do. And if you would like to, then you can change it to eraser and change the size of the brush to something smaller, which much better fits the size of the pavement. And then you can just click there, click there, click there. And then you can just hold or either uh, hold, and, hold and drag like I do now, or you can just position your mouse over there and click, 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 click so have a little wild effect, but not too much. So it's not something like it's unnatural, something like that. Now there are more complex uh, brushes, like for example, this here, which is called the bushes. Now that comes with two different uh, items. Those are actually items that you can find here. I will show you how you can create a customized uh, brush, how you can actually customize a brush. But now let's just go with this one. If you would like to paint a little area with the bushes over there, then you can do that. It's easy. You can you just uh, hold, click and hold your mouse and you have a little wild line of bushes over there like it would normally happen if it is, this is not very uh, well designed or it's just like, you know, just growing in the wild or something like that. So this is how you can do that. Uh, also, the same way you can populate areas like, for example, this one. Uh, let me just move around. So for example, this one with a smaller uh, um, grow, for example, let me just change the brush radius to something like this. And if I, let me just enlarge it a little more. So if I just do this, sometimes a tree appears, sometimes uh, patches of grass appear and so on. So this is how it combines these items based on the settings that you have for a specific brush. Now those, those brushes are the brushes that we ship with the software. But I would like to show you also how you can create your own customized brush. So I will go back to this fireplace, which I used before. 
I just turn this off so I'm not painting any surface accidental with grass or something like that. And then I go and select uh, this, um, this street view, for example. And from this street view, I can easily navigate to this area and I can easily paint this area with, uh, with, this, with this foliage painter. But instead of using the, uh, this, uh, this grass field, I can actually create a new brush with this tool here. If I click here, I can create a new empty brush. Now this empty brush comes with the name new composition. I can just click here. I can just name it to, I don't know, like mown grass um, field or something like that or area. So that will be the name of the of the brush. Now here I go back to the navigator and, and now I'm in the trees library. So I need to I just let me just cl close this and go back to um, the plants, for example. And in the plants library, I can find field grass, heather and uh, also the mown grass. Let, let, let me just paint this area a little bit with the with the existing uh, grass uh, one, which is the uh, the grass field. So let me just paint a little patch here so we can easily compare how what's the difference between the two. So now I'm switching back to my empty mown grass area and this here I can use the it's like golf grass. This is very, very short. The, 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 the S size one that I will use just the, the regular one. And I just click and drag it onto the tray here. So now I have this, this mown grass with the, with the mown grass uh, a set attached to that. And I will also change the brush radius something like this, maybe a little larger so I can nicely cover this area with the brush. And then what I do, I just start painting. And then now, as you can see, it's not too dense because the density is very low. So let me just undo this step and increase the density to a very high value. So I will have nearly no empty patches without grass. So what I do now, I just click quickly, you know, paint this area, click and hold and move the mouse. And if I'm uncertain, I just, I can just, you know, click to these areas without moving. So I'm not accidentally painting the top, for example, of this surface. So let me just click and drag, click and drag and paint it nicely. Later, if I make a mistake, I can, I can use the eraser, no problem. I can just change it the way uh, it's supposed to be. And then now let me just paint this area over here and so on. So now I have a nice mound grass area over here and there and over there as well. So after that, uh, let me just go back and close this, go back to this one, zoom into that and we can compare uh, what the difference is between the two different type of grass assets, the wild one, which is in the front and the mown grass that is in the back. Uh, so I can show you what the difference is between these two. Well, let me just, um, unselect this and go back to the front of you. And that now I would like to show you something that is uh, a little bit different from when you actually synchronize the whole project. Now I would like to uh, show you how you can send over individual objects uh, which you have selected in ArchLines library into the library of live and the same what uh, how you can do that with the uh, materials uh, from ArchLine to the live library. So now this is different from uh, how synchronizing a complete project and actually you can also create your own materials. You can import uh, your own uh, textures. You can also use the import command uh, and, and, and create any sort of uh, object or material just as I mentioned before. But now I would like to show you how you can send over individual items from ArchLine. So for this reason, I have this uh, object downloaded previously and saved it into the ArchLine XP library, into the Design Software's library. But I want to send this uh, over to live and the way I can do that, I can select this or any other item uh, that I would like to uh, export or, or yes, export and send uh, into live. I can make multiple selections, uh, either uh, should that be an object or, a mat or materials. And then I can go to the cog wheel uh, and I can just click on export to live and then it will automatically appear in live uh, on the other side. So here it is in live. Uh, so I have just sent over the advertisement um, post uh, into 
uh, live and then I can anything that I send over from Archline to live as an individual object not as a whole project I can find in to, in the objects library and in the imported objects uh, items now let me just make space for this item uh, I just move this to this area because this is where I would like to place this uh, advertisement uh, st uh, stand. So I just place it and drag and drop it over there. And I think now I should change the view to the street view. And then, well, I can also move it around the surface, but take care when you do such a thing, because in this case, actually, the, the ramp is slanted. So in that case, this uh, stand would be automatically aligned or slightly uh, slanted to the surface. So I just prefer uh, use the uh, axis in that case. So now what we have here, let me just zoom in and use the focus. And here now we can see a nice and detailed object. But what we would like to do with that, we would like to change the material. And the same way I have sent over the object uh, itself from Archline to live, I can I can send over materials, not just create new materials, but I can use my own uh, already created materials from uh, Archline and send it over and they would automatically appear in the same fashion. I could go to the materials and I can find the imported materials library and here I can find the advertisement material that I've just created in Archline and then sent it over uh, here. So what I will do with this one, I will just click and uh, drag it onto the surface and then it automatically appears. Now with any sort of material, uh, just as with this one, you can just select it, you can customize it, you can uh, change its offset, you can uh, change its offset vertically, horizontally, you can rotate it uh, either 90 degrees or any sort of given uh, angles, you can stretch it, you can do whatever you would like to do with that. And if you do not like those results, you can just always reset those values back to zero. And here comes the most important thing. Actually, you can animate those surfaces. So this is, if this is a rolling uh, advertisement, then you can just change the, the the speed from zero when it's still when it's a still image to anything like a positive value. In that case, it will climb up uh, or uh, perhaps move to the right if it's a horizontal speed. And if you just change this direction and you use a negative value, let me just go and click here, negative value. In that case, it starts rolling backwards and then now we have a different result. So if you would like to have that sort of uh, result, then you can just easily do that. You can also use animated uh, pathways on airports or something like that. So this is how you can uh, do that. Now, if you just zero this out, then it automatically stops and resets itself back to its original position. And here comes an also interesting thing. Uh, you can also apply videos onto surfaces. Just imagine a, a TV screen, a large advertisement, or like in this case, for example, this is an LCD or, a, or an LED uh, uh, screen outside uh, of, the, of the apartment. And you can uh, just go back and either use one of the shipped videos that we ship with the software, which you can find in the materials and videos. And then you can just use any of those vertical videos. I do not recommend use horizontal videos because they will be you know, stretched in an unfashioned uh, way, which we don't want. So I would either use this Black Friday promotion. Uh, this is a nice animation and automatically starts and it's looped and so on. So it, it, it works automatically. You can also change its properties. You can change its brightness. You can change any of this, uh, the properties. Or if it comes with a, with a sound, you can also hear that and you can change the volume. You can change any of those settings. Now I won't do that. I just wanted to highlight this, how, how this works. Uh, so now we have this nice feature here and uh, I think we are uh, ready with this part. So let me just close back the properties and let me have a look of what we have created. Let me just go back here. And so nice, we have a nice look with uh, animated people, trees, foliage, uh, surrounding, nice sky, even video surfaces. So this is what I wanted to create. Now, right before we move on to the final stage where I will create uh, an animated sequence out of this, uh, I want to show you how you can update all those views that you have on the tray now. Now we have five different views, uh, but those are kind of outdated because as you can see, this is actually not having any of the new features that I have added. This also, this also, so I just would like to update all those views together with all the images that I have already on my uh, hard drive. So it's a very simple step to do. Uh, either you can do them one by one, select it and, you know, just 
click here so the software will actually create a new version of this image it will update the view and it will update the image as well or you can just use this option with which the software will actually update all the snapshots and in one go it will actually just go through all of those and update any of those nicely so let me just open this folder up uh, which i did by clicking here and uh, as you can see there is this folder with all the images with the updated versions of your images those are image files that you can just uh, click and attach to an email or send it over via a phone or something like that so if you click on any of those those are something that you can watch and check in an image viewer and this is how it looks like so so this is really uh, a simple thing how you can update all your views in one simple go and before we move on, uh, I also wanted to show you how you can actually customize settings of cameras because uh, this way you can not only set up uh, views like, for example, this one with a specific sun setting, but also you can also make changes like um, perspective convert, uh, corrections. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you click here, you can actually check each and every views camera properties. You can change the field of view, you can change the exposure, you can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, uh, you can change the white balance to make it a little bit warmer, like a summertime uh, setting. Also, you can uh, add some sort of depth of field, uh, you can turn on the global illumination, which will change how light behaves and it will give a little extra detail uh, for a little extra cost of performance, but it, this really will look uh, spectacular. And also you can add some sort of uh, blooming, vignetting, uh, chromatic aberration. But, but in this specific case, uh, what I also want to add is a automatic lens shift. So let, let me show you uh, why I would use an automatic lens shift. Now, uh, in this specific case, if the camera does not see the top of the roof, I have a few options moving the camera back, tilting the camera up. So I'm, I'm not wanting to change the position, so I will tilt the camera up. That's, that's what I will do. But in this case, unfortunately, I'm also losing the perspective. The, the, the reason I do not want to really do this is that in this case, the, uh, you know, where the verticals are not really verticals in my image. Those are, you know, like slanted uh, um, lines here. So to fix this, uh, we have this uh, manual or automatic lens shift. The automatic lens shift works like magic. It's, it's automatically solving this and wherever you look at, it will automatically uh, make this change uh, by itself. So if you would like to update this change to the view, you just click here and then the software will automatically ch uh, change the view if you uh, say yes, and then it will apply those changes to the view and to the image that uh, just as I described previously. So actually the same thing goes with the street view, for example, let me just go back to the street view. So let me just quickly go through these. Again, I can change the exposure, just as I could do uh, with, with views one by one, I can create a night view with totally different camera properties and I can do uh, create a uh, daytime view with totally different um, camera settings, a different white balance, a different saturation, a different brightness, exposure, contrast, depth of field, uh, autofocus, for example, and also uh, sort of global illumination so to have uh, nice uh, details all around, uh, especially where uh, surfaces are uh, close to each other. And also, if I would like to, I can change the camera a little bit and I can use the automatic lens shift. And whenever I do any of those, I can apply the changes to any of those views at any time. So this is how you can also change the camera properties one by one, if you would like to, uh, view by view, and create spectacular views in literally seconds and update them with the latest changes. In the end, let me show you a very interesting thing, and this is how you can actually create professional animations literally in minutes with the software by using its built-in animation tools, uh, camera animation tools, and uh, by simply ap applying the proper settings. Uh, yeah, I will save this work later. I will just close that back up. And then I will go back to the play and edit animations. Now, this 
specific project that I'm working on uh, actually came with a default animation, which was part of the ArchLine project. In ArchLine, you can create animation paths, but in that case, you cannot render them. You can have only the linear uh, drone effects, which for some projects are okay, but that sort of animation is actually transferred here. Now, it, it was very simple. It's just a moving effect from right to left, and then it plays uh, along for like 12 minutes. Uh, this was actually created with the animation tools in ArchLine. So this is not actually what I want to use. So I just go back and I erase this. And I would like to show you how you can start from ground zero where you have no animations at all. In that case, I'm going back to this uh, front of you. And this is where from where I would like to start. I will go back to the animation and wherever I'm at, I am at with the camera, when I start adding a new animation, that will be the starting point. So if I click here, this will be the first frame of my animation. The uh, animation works with keyframes. So if you define one keyframe, then another one, then another one, the camera is, it, it will go through all those animations that we, and it will automatically link those uh, keyframes with a path. So I will just go uh, easy. And what I will do, I will just uh, create a closing shot and then a panning shot. This, these are the two that I would like to create, keep it very easy and easy to understand. So now I have the first shot, uh, the first keyframe, and then I zoom in because this is what I would like to have, a kind of a zooming effect, and then uh, like a dolly effect. And then I just add this as uh, the, the following keyframe. And that's it. If I would like to, I can just keep going on and add more and more keyframes, but I will just keep it simple. This, this will make it uh, looking much better. Now it's a very short animation. It's only one second animation. I can change its length to somewhere around like six seconds. And then if I just play it back now, it is, I think it's good. It's good, it's, it, it's a very good starting shot. So I'm fine with that. And I go back to the animation list because now I was actually in my animation adding keyframes. But now I can see on the tray, I can see all my animations. This is animation zero. If I click again on it, I can go back and edit the two keyframes. But if I jump back up and uh, I just would like to add the new animation as the following one, then I can just uh, go here. Let's say, I think the, 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 the following video will start from here and from here it will pan to the left. So this was the first keyframe, add the new animation. This is the first keyframe. Let's just pan to the left until this someplace that like this is in the center. So add the new keyframe. By default, again, the distance is only one second for that uh, length. And it's I think it's just too fast. So I will just change it back to somewhere around like nine uh, seconds. Uh, let me just play it back. Perhaps it's a little bit too slow. I can just speed it up if I would like to, but I prefer the speed so I will keep it because now I have two animations. If I go back to the animation list where I have the first animation and the second animation, they are in this sequence and in my tray, I can change their order using these two arrows, but I don't want to. So I will, I will start with this one and then I follow with the, with the other one. And I also would like to add some nice professional transition between those. So I just hit okay. I just added the, uh, the transitions and now let's just play this, how it looks like. So it's having a nice fade in effect. It's slowly closing to the building. It is fading out, fading in into the following one and then I can move to the left. So with these clear shots, you can create a spectacular and professional looking high quality and high definition videos in literally minutes. All you need to do is just to set up the animations that you like set up the order how you like them, set up the transition just as I did. And last, you need to click here and the software will actually render this into a video file in literally minutes. And then you can just go and find the file and upload to YouTube or actually share with anyone the way you want it. So that's it all. Uh, all you can do with the software is very simple, very visual and very spectacular. You can fill up the, the, the model easily with live and uh, you can easily create uh, snapshots. You can uh, very quickly create professional looking animations uh, should your uh, project uh, be anything, either a building like this or an interior project uh, like others that you can see uh, in our examples.
And this was the final episode of our uh, um, architectural tutorial series, the final chapter about how to create and how to turn all of your design with all of its surrounding into a vivid li uh, living uh, animation and uh, living uh, visual with snapshots and animations in the end in seconds and minutes. I hope you like this content and if you did so please give us a thumbs up. Uh, also subscribe to our channel if you uh, like this sort of content. And uh, we are actually having quite a few more webinars and, and, uh, and shows and an upcoming expo uh, coming soon. So see you next time.